In this tutorial, we will look at setting up and using a rotary encoder with the Raspberry Pi Pico. We will look at a common rotary encoder module found in many microcontroller kits and for a simple demonstration, we will use it to turn on a specific LED in a row, either by turning the knob clockwise or anti-clockwise. The rotary encoder has 5 pins in total. The CLK pin, which is encoder pin A, the DT pin, which is encoder pin B, the SW pin, which is our push button, and it is normally open and shortened to the ground on press. And then finally, we have our VCC pin, which is our voltage supply and our ground pin. The rotary encoder offers two ways of interaction. The first interaction is by rotation, whereby you can either rotate the knob in a clockwise or anti-clockwise direction. Every time you rotate the knob, it produces a low signal on a DT and CLK pin. Rotating clockwise causes the CLK pin to go low first and then the DT pin to go low. Rotating counterclockwise causes the DT pin to go low first and then the CLK pin to go low. Using this information, we can write code to determine the rotating direction. We can create a variable to either increase or decrease the variable by a set value depending on the direction we turn the knob. The last way of interacting is just the push button where we will test if the SW pin gets pulled to ground. To follow along with this tutorial, you will need the following a Raspberry Pi Pico running MicroPython, the rotary encoder module with a push button, breadboard, and six LEDs with current limiting resistors. Anything between 300 to 1 kilo ohm will be fine, and a few wires and jumper wires to make the necessary connections. Here is a schematic diagram for this example. You can choose any GPIO pins on your Pico to make the necessary connections. After making all the connections in the diagram, we can go look at the code. The code for this example is available in my GitHub repository, link given in the description. Open the rotary encoder folder, open rotary.py and copy all the code inside. In Forney, create a new file and paste the code. Let's take a quick look at the code together. In this block of code, we import all the Python modules and libraries, import the pen class from the machine library and import the uTime library. This will allow us to control the GPIO pens and time-based functions. In this block, we set up our DT pen, CLK pen and SW pen and we set it up as an input, making the pin mode to be pull up, keeping the logic level high. We then create a list of our LEDs and the pins we will use. We create an empty list where we will initialize our pins as output and append it to the list. In this for loop, we assign a six LEDs to be pin out, appending it to the list LED pins. We create a variable value to set the initial state of our encoder and previous values, which we set to high since both our CLK and DT pin will be high unless we turn the knob. We create a function in rotary change to check if our rotary was turned clockwise or anti-clockwise and update the value or if the push button was pressed. We set our previous value and value variable to the global variable and now we test for our first condition. If our previous value is not equal to the clock pin value, we will check if the clock pin value is zero and if it is true, we check to see if the DT pin is zero, then we know the knob has turned in the anti-clockwise direction. So we set our value equal to value minus one and we will take the modulus six of it and now we can count from zero to five and then if we get past five, we will go back to zero again and then we print out anti-clockwise and show the value. Else, if our DT pin was still 1, we know it turned clockwise and we set our value equal to value plus 1 and then we take the module 6 and we print out clockwise with the value. Then we set our previous value equal to the clock pin value to break the condition. In our second test, we test to see if the knob is being pressed. If the SW pin goes to low logic level, we will print out button pressed and set a short delay to help with debouncing. Now we create an endless loop by saying while true. Then we create a loop to go through the six LEDs, setting them to zero, checking if there is any change in the rotary. If there is, we will set the LED high corresponding to the value and have a short delay. That is in short how to set up the rotary encoder. You can use it for many different applications in your projects. I hope you found this tutorial helpful and if you did, consider subscribing to the channel for more content on a Raspberry Pi Pico. I will see you in the next video.